Hey everyone, if you have been keeping up with my posts the last few days, then you will know churches in Canada are burning right now. Not because it is a damn hot summer there at the moment, but by deliberate arson. And I'm not just talking about one or two churches here. There are literally dozens being attacked. I can't even count how many have been targeted. Just last night in Alberta, 10 churches were the target of vandalism. Last week, four Catholic churches were burnt to the ground. This is getting insane. But why is this happening? What is the, what, what was the thing that sparked this? Well, if you are not a Canadian, you probably do not know the history of the settlers and the indigenous in the country. And it is, you know, a sordid past, quite similar to the history of America and Australia. And one particular thing in Canada that goes highly criticized is our residential school programs, where essentially children were taken out of indigenous communities and sent to schools that would teach them to act like the European settlers and basically beat the indigenous culture out of them. In some cases, quite literally, where kids were both physically and sexually abused Many people refer to what happened as, at the very least, being a cultural genocide. And I would not disagree. Migrants coming to a new land and forcibly making a native people forget about their own history, customs, and language, and forcing them to change to theirs is absolutely destroying their culture deliberately. This is something all Canadians are educated on in school, and for the most part, we all agree was wrong. Now recently, what has re-sparked this conversation of historical abuse is the discovery of hundreds of unmarked graves using ground radars at former residential and boarding schools in Canada in multiple provinces. And while the country seems completely shocked by this discovery, the truth is for those who lived in these indigenous communities and those who know the history, this actually was known well before the mass media attention. As noted in the National Post, from the earliest days of the Indian residential school system, the federal government openly acknowledged high rates of student mortality. An official 1907 report into Manitoba Indian residential schools even included charts cataloging pupils as either good, sick, or dead. There was never an official policy on how to handle the dead from Indian residential schools, but because the Department of Indian Affairs refused to ship home the bodies of children for cost reasons, it follows that most were buried on or near school grounds. This was confirmed by the final report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission released in 2015. Many, if not most, of the several thousand children who died in residential schools are likely to be buried in unmarked and untended graves, it wrote. This is obviously horrific. I have not seen anyone disagree with that, and it's been a reopening of wounds for the nation to discuss and heal from. The National Post article actually offers some legitimate solutions and ways to make things better, like finding strategies to commemorate, protect, and document these grave sites. However, Unfortunately, some people have very little interest in healing and actually improving the lives of all Canadians and properly documenting history and simply want revenge, whether that revenge even makes sense or not. Which brings me to what does any of this have to do with churches? Well, many of these residential schools were in fact run by churches, whether that be Catholic, Anglican, or otherwise, and overseen by the government as well leading people to now blame all churches across Canada, despite the fact that the people who did this aren't even alive anymore, for these graves. Which is possibly the dumbest reaction to this incident imaginably possible. Firstly, many of these churches being burnt down are on Indigenous land, meaning the members of the church, the people employed there, the people who run charity work there and are receiving it, the people who go to worship there are likely indigenous themselves and may even be the descendants of residential school victims. I cannot imagine how burning down their place of worship is going to bring them truth and reconciliation. And speaking of truth, if for some reason any of these churches were connected to the residential schools and may have had documents or graves or anything, which people have no idea, 
They're just arbitrarily attacking Christian churches. But let's say there were a church that did and they went and burnt that down. They would be destroying evidence. They would be destroying history. They would be destroying people's abilities to properly document and account the stories of those who may have been impacted by the residential school program. It's just stupid. But most importantly, out of all the reasons that could be listed, <laughs> this is a crime. A crime against people who have done nothing wrong, and more so, a hate crime. You are destroying the place of worship of a religious group that is now gaining mass hatred in the country from the public for crimes they did not commit. No one is responsible for the crimes of a dead man, or even crimes of their relatives historically before them. No one would take it as an acceptable excuse to burn down a mosque in Canada because of a Muslim terror attack. That would be a hate crime. <laughs> and you would be arrested for it, rightly so, and it would be international news and the topic of political discussion for weeks in Canada. These church burnings, however, have been going on for weeks now, and I have only just started seeing them in the news somehow. And Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, has only commented on them for the first time yesterday. And what about progressive activists? What are they up to in all of this? Are they in an uproar about the destruction of worship sites in a country with freedom of religion? Are they, are they upset about this vandalism and arson? Oh, should we do a check mark check? Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> if I wake up tomorrow and the news is reporting that every Catholic church in Canada was mysteriously burned to the ground, I wouldn't be upset. Hashtag residential schools. Yep, that's about right. Normal blue check behavior there. <laughs> Seriously. Imagine if people behaved this way, reacting to any other community in Canada. If mosques started burning to the ground across the country, or say, if native heritage sites started burning to the ground across the country and we had verified accounts encouraging it and cheering it on. There would be a whole commission. The entire country would go into an uproar about extremism. And yes, you know what? Canada does have a problem with extremism. We're seeing it right now. And maybe we do need to deal with it. I'm just not sure politicians are ready to acknowledge the kind of extremism it is because it's looking like it doesn't quite fit into their neat little narrative. And that's the terrifying thing, is how long is this going to go on for before we recognize this as extremism? Are we gonna have to wait until someone is in one of those churches that gets burnt down? Will we have to wait until this escalates into something worse? Now, it is perfectly reasonable to be infuriated with terrorism. It is perfectly reasonable to be infuriated with residential schools, but harming and blaming people who had nothing to do with it is not reasonable. It's criminal. And this is like, I, I feel like I'm talking to a kindergarten class, but for some reason, there are people in Canada doing backflips, mental backflips, to try to excuse this. I had one person suggest to me that by lamenting the loss of these churches, I don't have empathy for those found in the graves at residential schools. <laughs> Could you imagine someone burning your house down and when you get upset about it, being told you don't have empathy for the deaths of someone who died at another house at the hands of another person long before you were born. This is absurd, just insane. And don't fall for it. Do not let these people gaslight you into thinking this is okay or justified in any sort of way. If you are a churchgoer in Canada, please contact your local representatives, get security teams and night crews out around your churches, install cameras if you have to so we can catch these people. Begin rebuilding if you've lost your place for community and worship. You have a right to your faith. You have a right to worship that is in the Canadian law. You have a right to not have your building burnt down in your community. And even if you aren't a Christian, even if you aren't a religious at all, or you're from a different faith, I would like to think that you still care about this too. I mean, this is a rights issue in Canada. This is a matter of extremism that could very well end up affecting groups other than Christians too. But I don't want to end it like that. I mean, it was just Canada Day. There's still so much beauty out there and we, we need, well, we need the truth. We also need less black pills. So. I hope you all know, those of you in Canada, I am praying for you. And I know many, many watching this and many more will stand up to help save churches there and churches around the world. 
And I think the reason a lot of us are so angry, I'm so upset, people are getting so fired up about this and everything going on in the world right now is because there is so much joy and goodness and hope and it's worth protecting. People love their communities, people love their churches, people love their families and they don't want to see them go down these dark paths. They don't want to see them lost and burnt to the ground and focus on that. These things are worthwhile. Focus on that and fight for that. Anyways, I love you all. Thank you for staying subscribed. Hit that like button and share this video so your friends who are being completely unreasonable about this issue will hopefully chill out and stand up against extremism. God bless you all. I will see you next time.